show on the nature of creativity. I'm Tamara Stutchlack, your host, and with us is Anastasia Symes, and she is a renowned artist and a theater set designer and uh, the costuming. Uh, she has an MA in Fine Arts from the Institute of Cinema in Moscow in set design. Yes. Anastasia, welcome. So let's jump right in. Mm -hmm. What are some of your inspirations for painting, which is, which is your first love in the arts? Yes. Well, I was raised uh, as a painter. Um, my whole family was devoted to different sorts of arts. My grandfather was an artist and set designer as well. Um, and, um, you know, it's, uh, I got a lot of good advices from him early on. Uh, but I think one of the best was, um, which is <laughs> uh, not relevant to this interview, but he said, if you want to paint something, uh, don't put it into words because the words will disappear and um, you will not be able to paint after, after that. And I definitely use this advice. Um, you know, when it comes to um, why I'm painting, uh, why I'm doing that, uh, first of all, this is my way of living. I don't believe I can imagine any other way. So as a child, it was very natural for you, and then just a progression into this will be my profession. Right. You know, um, as I said, I grew up in a family of artists, so they were trying to figure out which uh, venue they should put me in. Early on art classes. Yes, early on art music, classes. Music, dance. Yes, they checked me on everything and uh, <laughs> the, um, uh, the end result was the painting was it. But it was pretty clear. I think my career in art started pretty early on. Um, I was three years old. And I distinctly remember that moment, actually. I was standing behind my grandfather, who was painting this enormous painting, um, depicting uh, the uh, Tsar of Russia, Alexander Fyodorovich. And he was working on his golden robe, uh, which was uh, completely bejeweled. As you can see, I am. Uh, I have a weak spot for the jewelry, <laughs> it was weak even then. I saw him painting very meticulously uh, pearls, emeralds, and rubies on his golden robe. And I was dying from jealousy. I was burning with desire to step right in and take a brush and continue his um, work. Uh, which I actually did as soon as he was called to have his lunch to the kitchen. You picked up his brush. I picked up his brush and I went right to his painting and I started to continue this, you know, embroidery. And it didn't quite turn out as well as I thought it would. Um, it made me realize that I cannot do the same as he does. Um, and Did he then see your work? I retweeted. That's very interesting. I retweeted, and I was kind of scared by what I did, but I hoped maybe he wouldn't realize what happened. And of course, you know, a few minutes after, I've heard screams from the room, and he ran to the kitchen to my grandmother, and he says, uh, Tamara, Tamara, what was her name? She, Anastasia painted all over my painting. And uh, my grandmother said, well, let the child paint. And then you can paint all over it once it's dry. <laughs> and uh, that was something my grandfather couldn't take. So uh, he provided my own easel. He gave me my own uh, brushes and palette. And so it all started this way. Did he uh, live to see your work? Oh, absolutely, absolutely, yeah. And so what other influences have there been in, in your art? Well, I would say, you know, there was a huge influence of the family. It takes an enormous, I think, effort to bring uh, an artist up. So I think most people think it's just an individual calling and an it, interest. It is a and calling. it's interesting that you're bringing in your family. Yes, it is a calling, but um, I think it also, um, it is a craft which is like a almost like a witchcraft. It's 
passes, the secret of the craft passes from generation to generation. And I know the whole family is in theater, design, in movies. It's in your genes. It's, it, it is in your genes. And also, this is something you see people do. This is their profession. This is how they make their living. This is the whole way of so living. So what is the artistic thinking that, that you also gained from your family that you, that you know that is a distinction you have as yeah. an artist? An artist thinking is what? Well, you know, I think it was um, the whole attitude toward toward what art is. I think uh, it was treated in the most amazing way. It was not just thinking, it's the a respect. whole way of being. It is the whole way of being. It is almost a religious experience. This is the art treated as a religion. And just to give you a small example, uh, uh, how you know the life around art happened in our family, I would have a fits of inspiration when I was five years old. Uh, around 11 o'clock at night and you know this is the time to go to bed normally um, but my mother saw me being inflamed with this uh, all-consuming desire and uh, she would not interrupt me she would actually close the door tiptoe around the door and if somebody made a noise she would say Shh, Anastasia has an inspiration don't interrupt which was so that an amazing encouragement at such a young yes. age really do you think it, it made an enormous difference. difference it was the respect toward this the state. artistic process yes so what was. is that do you still have that in inspiration process or, or how do you yes uh, definitely but l let me just complete the story because it you know it has a second part and then um usually uh once i finished the painting which would be toward the midnight, I would call my grandfather and say, you know, I just finished the painting, and would you come over and see it? So he and my grandmother would hop into the car, drive for 40 minutes in the snow and cold, and come over just to see the last painting I produced, because it was that important for the whole family to, you know, to raise an what artist. What an acknowledgement of art and creativity. It, it was, so, you know, it's, this is still, remarkable. it still carries me through the whole life, I think, this attitude, this respect, and understanding of importance of the process. So, in contrast, would you say that you're not a tortured artist, that it's a creative process? <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, I would say ask any artist if they're tortured. <laughs> and I think it comes with the territory. Uh, you absolutely have to be tortured. Um, this is the part of the deal. Um, though, you know, I don't think I want to focus uh, in my art on the process of being tortured. I, there is a saying that art, art comes from the bleeding heart or bleeding wound. Uh, I'm not too interested in the actually moment when the wound is inflicted, it is just new and fresh. And a lot of artists do focus on, oh my God, I'm suffering. I'm suffering a lot, look at me. And this is you know, part of the process. Maybe for some artists it is important to study that. I think my whole um, philosophy in art comes to, um, to understanding that um, I think art is supposed to remind you that there is of what? A, a light in the end of the labyrinth, that every labyrinth has an ending if you have enough um, courage to go through it. And um, all the demons could be tamed, and night has an ending. and. Um, Every suffering has a closure. So I think... And these are recurring themes? I think this is the most important, basically, impulse behind my art. I, uh, as every artist, I have my own demons, and um, experience of life uh, brings it out. And so what are, what's an example of a life experience that you expressed in? Oh, you know, everyday life, relationship to people. I mean, everybody has their own, um, what I call demons, is uh, certain suffering, and uh, nobody ever consults, uh, you know, whatever pain you experience in, in the process of living, questions, where I am going, what am I doing, why I'm doing that. So 
I guess that's, um, that is something which goes into fabric of all of that. But for me, the most important thing about art that after all of your wandering through all of these gardens of evil, you finally pulled out and you see, ha, there is the light and there is the exit. And here I am, after all of that, um, I know how to get out. And I think in any form of art, that's what I'm looking for. So in most of your pieces of art, mm -hmm. and we will go on to your set design as mm -hmm. well, but most your art is each of them are telling us a, a, a story? You know, I go through the themes. Sometimes there is a theme which I'm opening up. Um, and um, for example, I spent the whole year studying the, um, the anatomy of power. Uh, I had the whole series of bull fighting. Uh, and that was very interesting for me because in a way it is depict, uh, depicted atmosphere of Washington. We live in such a strong, powerful city uh, where all the countries come to negotiate, to fight, and uh, there is a lot going on in the whole atmosphere. You can sense it, you can feel it. Uh, and um, there is a lot of power struggle and intensity. And um, at some point, I just really needed to internalize it. For me, it was very interesting to uh, examine this male power of the bull fighting with another bull and the challenge of it, uh, the whole story, and uh, what comes after you win. Uh, whether so we're coming to a, our break mm -hmm. and uh, we're going to wrap up for now mm -hmm. and uh, please join us after the break. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm.